it's Zoe. So, I need to really study for my upcoming exam, so I'm going to start making some more videos. And OBS is not... OBS and I are no longer friends, so... <laughs> I have to use Switch to uh, record these. So, I'm going to uh, start off with anti-herpes virus agents, and I'll probably go through and explain, you know, what different diseases that fall under herpes. And it's not just like the genital herpes, it's a bunch of other stuff too. So, the herpes virus family, there are, let's see, five that fall, that fall under it. So, herpes simplex virus 1 is the oral herpes or the cold sores. Uh, herpes simplex virus 2 is the genital herpes and the sores, genital sores. The Epstein-Barr virus, um, which is infectious mononucleosis or mono. The varicella zoster virus, which causes chickenpox and shingles. And cytomegalo megalovirus, um, it's a CMV infection, a serious disease in, uh, in people with very, very poor immune systems. Uh, don't know if we need to know that. You can also have, like, herpes in your eye. It's called, uh, HSV keratitis. It's, uh, very different than, like, pink eye. Pink eye is caused by something completely different. Let's see if I can find anything on how this actually happens. Mm -hmm. No, I think we're good on that. Mono, uh, mono or the Epstein Barr virus. Um, And I'm just saying this because I'm just looking at it and I'm like, well, I don't know if we really need to say this or not. Um, people who get symptoms of EBV are usually teenagers or adults and get better in two to four weeks. Um, however, uh, people will remain fatigued for several weeks or even months. Uh, varicella zoster virus, which causes chicken pox and shingles. Varicella is characterized by a maculopapular, macu, yeah, uh, vesicular rash uh, that can be uh, parodic and evolves into dried crusts or scabs over a 37 day period. Activation of the dormant virus results in the characteristic painful dermatomal rash of herpes zoster, which is often followed by pain in the disruption in the distribution of the. Is it still going? Yeah, I don't know. So did it just like completely start over? Maybe? Probably. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stitch these two together. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna just skip over that. Is that a megalovirus? Um, a very common virus. Um, when someone gets it, they retain it for the rest of their life. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for individuals who have a weakened immune system, especially those who've had um, organ, stem cell, or bone marrow transplants, uh, the infection can be fatal. S uh, and it spreads through. Um, like bodily fluids, so just keep an eye on that. All right, some meds that are used to treat this. Let's get into it, shall we? Really, actually, okay. 
So the first ones that we're going to be going over, they inhibit the viral DNA replication and nucleic acid synthesis. So, um, and we'll get into the actual names of them, and they, I think they also have, like, different um, mechanism of action. And then the last one, which is Abriva, is um, mainly what it does, it's just that it inhibits viral attachment and entry. But we're going to discuss all that. So first, we're just going to go over, like, it stops the replication process and... So, starting off with acyclovir and valcyclovir, which is a prodrug of acyclovir, um, it mimics uh, DGTP, which gets incorporated into the DNA polymerase, and thus halts the replication. Um, some mechanisms of resistance, uh, reduced or absent uh, thymidine kinase alter thymidine kinase activity resulting in decrease acyclovir phosphorylation uh, altered viral DNA polymerase with decreased affinity for acyclovir triphosphate uh, some of the activity it works better on cold sores followed by genital herpes followed by the uh, Zoster and then the Epstein Barr virus. Clinical indication uh, treatment of initial episodes and the management of recurrent episodes of genital herpes, acute treatment of herpes zoster, varicella, and herpes labalis, which is um, cold sores. Adverse effects uh, acute renal failure, neurological toxicity, which can be agitation, uh, DTs, hallucinations, or monoclonosis and extravation. Famciclovir um, does the same thing. It's a prodrug for uh, pinciclovir. Activity, yet again, first cold sores followed by the genital herpes, uh, zoster, and then Epstein-Barr virus. Clinical indications, treatment of, <coughs> of initial episodes and the management of recurrent episodes of Genital herpes, acute treatment of herpes zoster, and herpes labalis, um, which is the cold sores. Adverse effects, uh, nausea, headache, genital urinary, which is such as dysmenorrhea. Warnings and precaution, use with caution in patients with renal impairment, uh, dose adjustment required. The tablets do contain lactose, so do not use um, if someone is like lactose intolerant. <laughs> Uh, Valganciclovir, and which is a prodrug of Ganciclovir, it mimics uh, DGT, DGTP, which gets incorporated into DNA polymerase and thus stops the replication process. Activity um, as inhibitory activity against all herpes viruses, and especially active against CMV. So this is the first one that we've seen so far that really treat the cytomegalovirus. Um, clinical in indications, prevention of CMV infection and in patients receiving organ tra transport uh, from CMV seropositive donors, treatment of CMV, retinitis in patients with AIDS, adverse effects, hypertension, anemia, thrombocytopenia, graft rejection, uh, tremor, fever, um, some GI such as diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, which is typical. Uh, box warnings, um, hematologic toxicity, severe leukopenia, neutropenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, pancytopenia, and bone marrow failure, and impairment in fertility, and it is carcinogenic and teratogenic. So there's an IV form of this. I believe, or it's something very, very similar um, of the Ganciclovir that it's treated like a chemo drug, but it's not really chemo, I think. I might be wrong. Cetafivir, uh, um, it competitively inhibits DCTP into viral DNA by DNA polymerase. 
activity, see MV, uh, cold sores, general herpes, and zoster. Clinical indication treatment of CMV retinitis in patients with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Box warning, nephrotoxicity, neutropenia, carcinogenic, teratogenic, hyposperm, hyposperemia. Can't pronounce that for some reason. Contraindications um, is poor renal failure, uh, use uh, with or within um, seven days of nephrotoxic agents. Um, um, one of the off-label routes is just topically and it can be um, applied topically for the mucocutaneous infections. So that's kind of cool. It's mainly given IV. Uh, Foscarnet uh, mechanism of action is that it competitively inhibits DCTP into viral DNA by DNA polymerase. Activity against all herpes virus and HIV. So this is the uh, one I added on to it. Like the previous one, I kind of helped with AIDS a little bit. But this is like... What is it? <laughs> Whatever. We're just going to drop that because I couldn't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Ah, clinical indications. Treatment of acyclovir-resistant mucocutaneous HCV infection and or CMV retinitis with immunocompromised patients, uh, such as patients with advanced AIDS. Adverse effects, fever, headache, electro ele electrolyte imbalance, such as hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypophosphatemia. Uh, seizures from electrolyte imbalance, GI symptoms such as diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting, anemia, granulocytopenia, renal impairment, QT prolongations, um, including uh, torsade de, po de points. Torsade de point? I don't know. It's French. I can't, I can't speak French. Bucks warning renal impairment and seizures. And the, um, hmm. okay, so the part where there was seizures, there, it's mainly dose related because, you know, as, as we saw with all the adverse effects is that it can drop a lot of your electrolytes. But if you supplement with those electrolytes, the seizures kind of dwindle and you can continue using it. All right, uh, next one. Try fluoridine, which is ophthalmic. Um, mechanism of action is that it inhibits thimidylate synthase. Uh, which inhibits its incorporation into DNA. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, activity is against uh, the cold sores and genital herpes. Clinical indications. Treatment of primary conjunctiva and epithelial keratitis due to HSV1 and HSV2. Adverse effects, burning, stinging, sensation of the eyes, eyelids, eyelid edema, local ocular hypersensitivity reaction, and dry eyes. Abriva. Okay, so she made a big point of, so with cold sores and any sort of herpes, anything, you get this weird tingle when you, you know it's about to start. <laughs> And what you have to do with a Breva is as soon as you feel the tingles in that exact spot, you put a Breva on there because once the sores are there, you can't, this is useless because uh, it, inhibits, it inhibits <laughs> the uh, fusion between the plasma membrane and the viral envelope, preventing entry of the virus into the cell. So you kind of don't want it to, you know, go into the cell. It's just kind of like, ooh, you know, so... That didn't explain my little woo, you know? Because once, once it breaks out, it's already in the cells, you screwed. So. 
It is available over the counter. It, it's only active against cold sores. Clinical indications, treatment of cold sores or fever blisters on the face or lips. Adverse effects is some hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, topical treatment beginning within 12 hours of the prodomal symptoms or leisure onset reduces healing time by about a day and is usually well tolerated. But uh, do not put it on after you've actually had the breakout because then you're screwed. There's another one. It's a uh, I'm in a Quimob cream, uh, Zyclara and Aldera. Um, so they actually don't do anything with antiviral activity. What they do is that they stimulate the innate and acquired immunity responses, which um, causes apoptosis or death of the disease tissue. So, hmm. so labeled clinical indications is uh, actinic uh, keratosis, genital or perianal warts, and superficial basal cell carcinoma. And off-labeled indications is a saclovir-resistant HSV infection. Adverse effects, localized dermatologic erythemia, uh, xeroderma, crested skin, skin sclerosis, uh, dermal ulcer, vesiculation, uh, edema, burning, and, uh, and an upper respiratory tract infection. All right, that is all for anti-herpes agents. Have fun. Have a good day.